In this video, we're going to be looking at a question from the Maths Leave Insert Paper 2 from 2022. You'll find some timestamps below the video if you want to skip to a specific question. And also, if you want to go to a different question that I'm covering in this video, check out the playlist that you should find a link for in the description below. This is question six. We have some geometry, especially revolving around a circle. Now, before we even get to the first question, they set up the question, part A, they show us this. They, they give us all the numbers for it, but really they show us everything we need on the picture. Although it's important to read it as well. There can be um, some important clues. I don't see any in this, oh, diameter. The word diameter is important. But I guess once you know O is the center, that tells you the same thing. Okay, one thing I like to do before I even answer the question is, I have a look and see if there's anything simple I can fill in. Like, they're, they're probably going to ask me what X is. There is definitely. But I might be able to find some of the other um, numbers quite easily. And uh, one that stands out to me, the diameter here, it's a straight line. If that's 130, well, this must be 50. Straight line has to add up to 160. Uh, 180, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, and then a few other things, two things especially that are important to look out in a circle question. And that's um, radius. So uh, what's a radius? O to B, that's a radius. Put a little line there. O to D, that's also a radius. Well, they're equal then. O to A, that's also a radius. That's all equal. That's going to be very helpful. The other thing to look out for is when you have a diameter, and a triangle hits the circle, like we have here, and if I draw that again, this angle here has to be 90 degrees. There's a theorem for that, we can go ahead and prove it, it'll be in your book somewhere. So this angle up here, this big angle is 90 degrees. So that's uh, something else that's useful. Um, Let's skip on to part one and ask, what are they actually asking? Write down the angle A, D, B. So A, D, B. That is this angle up here. That's this entire angle up here. So part one, they often help you through this um, by giving you little clues. Here's how you'd start answering the question. So part one is simply 90 degrees. And you could give a reason. You could say um, because the triangle is in a semicircle. And that, that'd be enough for them. That'd be, uh, even if you wrote 100 by accident and you wrote because it's in a semicircle, they probably give you most of the marks because you just misremember the number rather than the idea. Okay, so part two, um, A, A, O, D, A, O, D is 130. Work out the, si the, the size of the angle marked X. Okay, so how would you do this? Uh, there's a couple of ways to go ahead doing it. The fact that I've put 50 in, that would help already. And the big clue here is to find an isosceles triangle. And we can do that because of all these radius. So let me draw um, A, O, and D again. But I'm going to flip it on its side. A, O, D. This is A um, over here. That would be D down here. And there would be O. And remember, this is a radius. These are equal to each other. That's an isosceles triangle. Now you don't have to draw it again. It's just, I find some students, it helps to see it like this. Uh, and we know this is 130. So if this is an isosceles triangle, this and this must equal each other. Um, so, and they must add up to get 50. Because they, they have to add together with 130 to get 180. So what's missing from 130 to 180? 50. These two have to add to 50 and they have to be the same. So they have to be 25. Now that would be enough now to start answering the question. 25 goes up there. So X has to add to 90. These two numbers have to add up to 90. So uh, let's write X, um, is this number two, part two? X must equal 65, 65. Uh, very quickly, we could have also used this triangle here. It is also an isosceles triangle. That's equal to that. This angle size is 50. That leaves 130 here. Two numbers to add to 130 that are the same. 
is 65. So that's 65 and that's 65. Either way, we found the answer to be 65. Okay, so part two also tells us the radius of the circle is 8D in. Find the length of the arc of AD. Let me rub this out so we have a bit more room to play with. Okay, so they're telling us that the length here is AD in. Um, so all these radiuses are AD in. And they want us to find out the arc of AD. So A to D, that's a straight line. And the arc is around here. So let me draw that here. A be here, D is here. They want the length of this arc. And how we do that is we use a wedge like this. There's formula in your, again, in your book here, you'll find a formula for this. Um, oh, one little extra thing. They do say the arc from AD. They never say the small arc, or we call it minor arc. So they could have been asking um, about, let me draw like this, this big arc. So actually you could answer two different answers for this question. You could give this answer, or this answer, both different sides. I'm only gonna answer this one. If you're smart enough to think of this answer, then you probably aren't watching this video to help you, to help you solve the question. So uh, we have this arc, we know what they're asking us for, that's 130 and that is um, 18, they told us. And we're looking for this length here. You can put X there. The book usually puts an L for there, but it really doesn't matter. And if you look at your, your formula book, there will be a image that looks like a wedge. It's on page nine. And it gives a formula for the length of this arc or the area even. But the length is the one we want. So it says L is equal to two pi or angle divided by 360. And we can go ahead and fill all these numbers in. That's two, we leave pi. They, yeah, they wanted pi. They said in the question, give your answer in terms of pi. That just means leave pi alone. Just don't, don't have to put in 3.14, just leave it alone. Or is the radius 18? Um, oh, the angle, we know the angle, angle is 130 divided by 360. Okay, two times 18 is 36. 36 divides into 360 10 times. Um, and, that, and then 10 divides into 130 13 times. So the answer here, all that's left is 13 and a pi. You can go ahead and use it, put this in your calculator as well. Some calculators, um, most calculators should give you pi as an answer if you put a pi in as well. Um, but 13 pi, I, I believe I, I looked up the answer somewhere, I, I don't have it here, but if you did get the longer arc all the way around, I think it's 23 pi, but uh, it's done the same way. It's just instead of the angle 130 here, the angle would be, oh yeah, 230 would be the angle around. 230, which would turn out to be 23 pi. Okay, let's move on to part B. I'll rub this out. Actually, you know what? I don't really need to rub anything out because part B, um, there's not, nothing really I can do for you. I just tell you the answer and you can look that up yourself. Um, so the question asks, it gives a statement. If two triangles are similar, they must be congruent. And then they just ask you, is that true? or is it false? Now the first one is um, false. Um, I guess I could draw, I'll just draw a quick picture up here. Um, so similar, it means to be nearly the same. Uh, it looks similar, but it's not exactly the same. So here'd be two similar triangles, a little one and a big one. They're, they have the same angles, but their lengths are different. That's a similar triangle. A congruent triangle would be this one and this one. Same size, same angles, same everything. Although you could also have one twisted on its side. This and this is also congruent. Same angles, same lengths, they're just tilted. That's also congruent. So um, if two triangles are similar, like this, are they congruent? Instead of congruent, you can think um, well, actually, yeah, the best way to think of it is similar, same angles, congruent, same angles, and same lengths. 
So if you have the same angles, do you have the same lengths? No, the B part two, uh, sorry, part uh, two is false. Reason is similar, has the same angles, but it does not have the same lengths. Does not necessarily have the same lengths. Uh, B part, sorry, that's part one. B part two is the opposite. It says, if two triangles are congruent, these are congruent, are they similar? Now the answer there is true, and it's for the same reason. It's if a triangle, so what you, I would write there is something like, if a triangle is congruent, they have the same angles and the same sides. If a triangle is similar, they have the same angles. Therefore, this is true. And I'd write the same thing up here, except therefore, this is false. Um, but go ahead and look up um, the answers online for that to get the exact answer they want. You, you don't have to write it. You just have to write some idea like this. Read your book, read what similar is, what congruent is, and write anything in your own words. Really, they'll be very lenient. They'll forgive any English mistakes. They just want you to roughly get the idea of the same angles and the same lengths and make sure, get them correct which way around it is. Okay, hopefully that answers uh, that in some way. Apologies for part B, I can't really do any maths on the board to help you, but that's just a bit of study. But if you have any questions, put them below and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching, have a great day.